We humans have accomplished a lot on the Earth, although not every other species would agree that it's all been good. Lots of animals have gone extinct since the dawn of Homo sapiens, but some of those supposedly extinct creatures have actually been rediscovered years later. Coelacanths once again graced us with their presence off the coast of South Africa in 1938, a whopping 66 million years after they were thought to have gone extinct. The initial find made headlines worldwide, and with good reason. The coelacanth is a biological time machine, giving scientists a chance to rewind to a time before humans even existed. This fish's morphology includes things that may have developed into humanoid features later on, like a uniquely hinged skull, tube-like heart shape, and a nearly vacant, fat-filled brain. Despite a 400 million year run, these bony fish are hanging on by a thread. There are less than 10,000 of the two species of coelacanths still in existence, with numbers continuously dwindling. Nobody's trying to eat them, but they are getting caught in fishing nets, and they're also at risk from climate change. Coelacanths can grow up to 6 feet in length, weigh up to 200 pounds, and live around 60 years in the wild. They're not very tasty, with oily, waxy, and mucousy flesh that lends a distinctively foul flavor to each bite. You're probably better off sticking to something like Brussels sprouts. The New Zealand storm petrel was believed to be extinct for over 100 years before a chance sighting in January 2003, followed by photographic evidence later that year. Professional bird photographer Brian Thomas happened to be on assignment off the coast of Little Barrier Island when he snapped the photos that would convince many that the nocturnal species was back from beyond the grave. I thought you were dead. The first true confirmation came in odd fashion when in 2005 a bird landed on a fishing boat in stormy weather. The fisherman just happened to be an ex-New Zealand Wildlife Service officer, and he quickly recognized that the bird was distinctive and boxed it up. Despite a renewed effort to study and track the species, the New Zealand storm petrel remains relatively elusive to scientists. It's about the size of a sparrow and lives the majority of its life at sea. In 2014, scientists were able to track down a petrel nest and egg. Just about a square inch in size, it was described in a New Zealand Herald article as white with a fine dusting of pink spots concentrated on one end. The Arakan forest turtle is one of the world's most endangered species, with only a handful in captivity and likely not many more in the forests of Myanmar and Bangladesh that they call home. These lethargic loafers have been AWOL since a 1908 sighting by a British military officer, but then they started showing up in Asian food markets in 1994. While this specific breed wasn't commercially hunted, locals had no qualms about chowing down on them to counteract things like infertility, weakness, poverty, or a lack of happiness. The threat of human consumption, coupled with a long mating cycle that produces just one egg per year, has made the road to abundance for this turtle increasingly difficult. However, recent years have seen conservation areas mandated, slightly increasing their numbers in the wild. An organization such as the Turtle Conservancy and Zoo Atlanta have had success in hatching more keeping the dream alive for those foot-long shellbacked reptiles. But am I not turtly enough for the turtle club? The Lord Howe stick insect was missing for quite some time. Tree lobsters, as they're known colloquially, only occur in the Lord Howe Island group, which is about 370 miles off the eastern coast of Australia. Once used as fishing bait, their population was thought to have been eradicated when the SS Macambo ran aground in 1918, introducing voracious black rats that resulted in the extinction of many of the island's animals. The problem got worse when officials tried to address it by introducing Tasmanian mast owls, a disastrous double-down on carnivorism. Things took a surprising turn in 2001 when 24 of these surprisingly fast 5-inch bugs were rediscovered 100 feet up under a single shrub on Ball's Pyramid. Scientists were able to find two breeding pairs, one of which was sent to a private breeder and the other to the Melbourne Zoo, which has since led to initial success in repopulating the species. By 2016, the zoo had hatched around 13,000 tree lobsters and had also sent eggs to zoos in England, Toronto, and San Diego to establish insurance colonies. If all goes well, plans to repopulate Lord Howe Island will be put into place once rat populations have been eradicated. The New Guinea Highland Wild Dog is one of the rarest and most primitive canine species in the world. Ironically enough, the first dog seen in over 50 years actually found us, as it followed a researcher who was looking for evidence of the breed. Considered an apex predator of New Guinea, this species is known to natives as Angin Penyani, or dog that sings. It's considered the foundational breed of what would become known as the New Guinea singing dog. These canines howl with a range that matches Mariah Carey, trilling and hitting notes that share sonic similarities with birds and humpback whales. There we go. <laughs> the species is a variant of the gray wolf, diverging in evolution in the late Pleistocene era, and also shares DNA with Australian dingoes. 
Despite its dignified lineage and confirmed sightings in the wild, virtually nothing else is known about the species, which is considered something of a missing link in the genetic history of canines. Imagine being so seductive that people are willing to kill just for a chance to get a piece of you. This is the reality that the Kashmir musk deer must contend with. Rediscovered in 2009 after disappearing since 1949, the species is native to Afghanistan, Pakistan, Nepal, and India. It makes its home in steep rocky outcrops with dense foliage. Adding to its elusive nature, the Kashmir musk deer is generally only spotted in the early morning. With a soft, smooth, eminently pettable coat, it looks like it could make for a great plush doll to give a little kid as a birthday present. While gazing into its big brown doe eyes, you might just be tempted to nuzzle your face right up to it and give it a big kiss. That is, until you see its fangs. Despite their otherwise cuddly appearance, it turns out that the males have some razor-sharp teeth used to do battle with other males during mating season. It would be useful if they could use their fangs to scare away poachers who take them for their meat and musky scent, traditionally believed to be an aphrodisiac. Capable of producing one of nature's most penetrating lingering odors, the musk gland demand is so high that six of seven musk-producing species of deer are classified as endangered. Though thought to have been extinct since 1921, the pygmy tarsier had a bit of a glimmer of hope in 2000 when scientists trapping rats in Indonesia accidentally trapped and killed one. While this wasn't an ideal start, the team managed to capture a few live tarsiers eight years later on the Indonesian island of Sulawesi. Pygmy tarsiers look like a bit of a cross between gremlins and furbies, and they form sweet little couples that stay together for up to 15 months, spending their days lounging in trees and their nights hunting insects. At 4 inches long and 2 ounces in weight, when fully grown, they're pocket-sized and undeniably adorable little carnivores, often preferring to communicate with one another through touch. Despite having the dimensions of a Kit Kat bar, pygmy tarsiers pack a lot of unique features into their frames, ranging from cute to somewhat unnerving. Each of their fingers has nails, and they love to use these glamorous digits for communication. On the slightly creepier end of the spectrum, they can also rotate their heads about 180 degrees both ways, an adaptation that helps their giant fixed socket eyeballs see insects to nibble. They also have some of the best night vision in the animal kingdom, which means that even when you can't see them, they can see you. You won't find the Albany Adder in the capital of New York State, or almost anywhere else for that matter. One of the most threatened species still in existence, this South African snake has been recorded 12 times since its discovery in 1937. Actually, according to National Geographic, the count is 13 if you include the one they found that had been hit by a car. Tiny, venomous, and incredibly rare, it took a team of conservationists on an expedition weeks to find an Albany Adder, confirming the species still existed just one month before it would have been officially classified as extinct. They knew they had it when they spotted a six-inch female slithering across a road, recognizing its bright patterning, constant look of surprise, and total lack of concern for automotive traffic. This diminutive breed has never logged a human bite as far as anyone knows, preferring to seek out geckos, skinks, and small rodents. Nevertheless, though its venom is presumed to be non-lethal and to maybe induce mild pain and swelling, the fact that it has venom at all makes the adder less likely to receive sympathy from the public. Combine that with a shrinking habitat and conservationists have their work cut out for them. To many bird watchers, the Australian night parrot is considered the holy grail. Finding it will rank you in esteemed company among the bird watching community. This particular bird is so rarely seen that ornithologists who have spent decades searching for it haven't found it, or they've even risked their careers to photograph it. This golden snitch of a bird was first described in 1861 by ornithologist John Gould. From 1912 to 1979, nobody could find it, and since then, it's only been seen a handful of times, including the most recent sighting in 2017, near Lake Disappointment in Western Australia. Despite the mythical aura surrounding it, there's not really much to write home about when it comes to this night parrot. It's nocturnal, hence its name, and it's essentially just a pudgy green ball mixed with bits of brown that prefers to hop around on the ground rather than use its wings. If you want to see it in flight, you've got to scare it, which will cause it to emit its odd startled croak before lifting off. Otherwise, it'll just putter around in the tall grass while scavenging for seeds and herbs. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more messed up history videos about animals are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.